Hello, my name is Alexa and I am the Assistant Head of the Digital Services Department at the Niles Main District Library. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about resumes. Our learning objectives for today are how to create and format a resume, the knowledge to understand how to present skills and experience accurately in a readable format for your resume, and having the confidence to create a new resume, improve a current one, and maintain your resume for future use after this class is over. So your resume's sole purpose is to get you an interview. Hiring managers will typically spend between 10 to 30 seconds deciding whether a resume is worth reading. In that short span of time, your resume must be relevant, organized, and easy to read, or it will be discarded. All right, let's get into a little bit of how to write your resume. Unfortunately, there is no one way to write a resume, and there are no hard and fast rules. What we are going to go over today are tips, guidelines, and best practices for writing a resume. Some of the things we'll go over are format choices, order of information, and styling of your resume. There are three formats of a resume. You can choose a chronological one, functional, or a combination hybrid. Each come with their own advantages and disadvantages. Let's take a look at each of them individually. A chronological resume starts by listing your work history with the most recent position listed first. The experience section is the focus of the resume. Each job or the last several jobs is described in some detail, and there is no major section of skills or accomplishments at the beginning of the resume. Employers typically prefer this type of resume because it's easy to see what jobs you have held and when you have worked at them. This is the most common type of resume you may come across. This type of resume works well for job seekers with a strong, solid work history and when you are staying in the same profession and in the same type of work. So if you're starting your career or if you're changing career fields, you might consider a different resume type. A functional resume focuses on your skills and experience rather than on your chronological work history. Instead of having a work history section at the top of your resume, you might have a professional experience or accomplishments section that lists various skills you have developed over the years. A functional resume might not include one's employment history at all, or might have a concise list of work history at the bottom of the resume. Functional resumes are used most often by people who are changing careers or who have gaps in their employment history. It is also useful for people who are new to the workforce, have limited work history, or again, who have a gap in their employment. By highlighting skills rather than work history, one can emphasize that he or she is qualified for the job. All right, and finally, the combination or hybrid resume. This resume is a mix between a chronological resume and a functional one. At the top of the resume is a list of one's skills and qualifications. Below this is one's chronological work history. However, the work history is not the focus of the resume and typically does not take up much space on the page. With this type of resume, you can highlight the skills you have that are relevant to the job you're applying for, as well as provide your chronological work history. After all, most employers wanna see your work history, even if that history is not very extensive. This kind of resume helps you highlight what makes you the best fit for a job while still giving the employer all the information he or she wants. All right, now we are gonna pivot and discuss a little more about each section of your resume. Now the first section is contact information, and this is pretty self-explanatory. When listing your contact deals, you should follow this order. Your name should be in the largest font on the page, and your middle initial is optional. You can include your mailing address. Some people choose not to, um, but some employers may wanna know how far your commute would be to the office. A valid telephone number and make sure that uh, your phone number is also attached to an appropriate voicemail message. An email address and again make sure it's appropriate you are applying for a professional job. Other things to include in the contact information section, a link to an online portfolio, or your LinkedIn profile. Again, these are totally optional and you do not have to include them. 
Another optional portion of your resume is the professional summary. If you do uh, choose to include it, um, it is the one place to include professional characteristics, like that you are a highly energetic person, um, you have a gift for solving complex problems in a fast paced environment, you are a natural leader, you have exceptional interpersonal skills, you are committed to excellence, etc. Gear every word in the summary to your goal, which again is getting you that interview. Here are the most common ingredients of a well written summary a short phrase describing your profession, followed by a statement of broad or specialized expertise, followed by two or three additional statements related to any of the following. Depth of your skills, unique mix of skills, range of environments in which you have experience, a special or well-documented accomplishment, a history of awards, promotions, or other superior performances. All right, and now we're gonna talk about the professional experience section of your resume. For each role, you are going to list the following information. The company name and the city and state in which you worked. Your job title. If your title is specific to your organization, you can include a translation of sorts in parentheses next to your official job title. Start and end dates, which include the month and year and finally, your job description or summary of your work duties at that specific job. We're gonna talk a little bit about transferable skills. So jobs in different professional fields can often have a number of similar requirements. Let's say that you wanna go from a marketing position in a pharmaceutical firm to a fundraising role for a nonprofit. What are the skills you've already demonstrated that are applicable? There may be more than you think. Consider these possibilities, time management, project management, collaboration, persuasive communicating, strong decision-making skills, composure under pressure, and innovative problem solving. All right, so a general rule is that each job experience has around three to five bullet points of your main duties and achievements. Begin each description with a powerful verb such as spearheaded or implemented instead of a weak phrase such as responsible for. Quantify accomplishments and duties with numbers or percentages to keep the attention of hiring managers. Rather than listing typical responsibilities, focus on impressive achievements such as reducing company expenses or finishing a project under budget. There are three parts to a strong bullet point. The first is the action verb, which should always be the first word after your bullet point. The second point is a quantifiable point. The third is a specific and relevant job duty. So an example could be trained five plus cashiers, managing their cash limits and guaranteeing quality customer service at all times. And another example could be spearheaded the development of the first media kit amalgamation for all company projects, increasing national sales by 8%. And you can see in the second example that the quantifiable point does not need to come immediately after the action verb. So, all right, moving on to the education section of your resume. So having a solid education section helps to display the foundation of your knowledge and expertise. Depending on your professional experience, you may want to consider switching the order of the professional experience and the educational sections. For instance, college or high school students that lack seasoned professional experience benefit from emphasizing their education by placing it before the professional experience section. In addition, if you possess a wealth of professional experience, then it's appropriate to keep this section short and sweet. So here are the main points to include in your education section. You want to include the name of your university, community college, or technical school. Don't include high school unless you did not attend college. The location of the school, just the city and state is fine. The date of graduation, you can do the year or the month and the year. The degree that you earned. All right, so additional sections. By now, um, you've already added the nuts and bolts to your resume but we're gonna go over a few sections you may wanna consider adding to help strengthen your resume. The certification section is the most important of all the other sections you can include, but adding a certification or license section is largely dependent on your industry. 
You can also include technical skills. Some careers require specialized knowledge and hands-on skills. A technical skills section is helpful in showcasing your knowledge of specific systems. To prevent this section from taking up too much space, try breaking up this section into categories and list your skills within each. For example, under software, you could have proficient in Microsoft Office Suite, Visio, and Oracle. Under programming languages, you can include HTML, C++, and Python. You can also include an additional skills section, which is a short and concise list of skills relevant to your industry. This section is similar to technical skills, but is often used for industries that do not specifically require advanced skills. So you can include things like fluency in a second language or knowledge of computer applications like Photoshop or Illustrator, or your ability to operate heavy machinery. Things not to include in this section are generic statements like customer service skills or run-of-the-mill skills like listening and any unrelated skills that don't pertain to the job that you are applying for. So you have all of your content typed up and you're feeling confident about getting that interview. Now for the finishing touches. It's time to give your resume a bit of personality. One of the oldest questions in the book is how many pages your resume should be. Typically, it should be about one page, but if you have information that is highly relevant to the position you are applying for, then you can go ahead and add another page. However, if you are just adding fluff for the sake of adding pages, then your resume will suffer. Let's talk about font and sizing. So the font style and size is largely dependent on your preference, but there are a couple guidelines to follow. You do wanna choose an easy to read font and you wanna use the same font throughout your resume. Um, you also wanna change the size in descending order for your name, headers, and bullet points. You don't wanna choose a font that has really small sizes just so you can cram everything onto one page. You do not wanna pick wacky fonts. Um, and you don't want to go below a nine point font. For sizing, many resumes follow a 24, 12, 10 format. This means that your name is in 24 font, the body headers are 12 point font, and the bullet points are 10 point font. This is by no means a rule, but rather a guideline to consider following. Just remember to keep the readability in mind when choosing sizes. Um, here are some popular font choices. For serif fonts, you have Times New Roman, Georgia, Bookman Old Style, and Century Gothic. And sans serif fonts, you have Arial, Helvetica, Tahoma, and Calibri. With the margins on your resume, um, a one inch margin is the safest bet for applicants that lack experience. If you have a wealth of experience that you're trying to fit to one page, then it is acceptable to reduce the margins. But do be cautious when reducing the margins. If they are too small, your pages will look overcrowded. To be safe, it's recommended not to go below um, a 0.5 margin. Just a couple reminders before we wrap up our class for today. Remember to proofread your resume before you send it. Double check information is correct in every section. Look for spelling and grammatical errors and keep information brief and to the point. Never add a reference section on your resume. If an employer requests them, you can send them in a separate document. Remember to be honest about your education, work experience, and skills, and do not guess about dates of employment, phone numbers, or addresses. Thank you for watching this video. For a list of online resources available with your Niles Main District Library card, go to www.nileslibrary.org research.